hello there. Boris went to visit Volodymyr yesterday in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv, or Kiev. Now, the trip Boris Johnson made to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv or Kiev, or however you want to pronounce it, to meet with the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, sparked much controversy, and social media was alight with it. He's stupid to go there, said some. He should stay here and look after us in the UK, said others. He should forget these photo opportunities, said yet more people. And there were criticisms of him having no visible UK protection officers. And there were, of course, those gushing about how brave our Prime Minister is for going over there. And that's the bit that we'll have Nicola Sturgeon on the phone to Team Volodymyr to get a visit jacked up, especially as the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has already been to meet Zelensky. Anyway, at least Boris went there as scruffily attired as ever, and thankfully we weren't subjected to the sight of him bedecked in a skewed combat helmet and badly fitting flak jacket. Or a Macron stubble and hoodie get-up come to that. Although he was surrounded by uh, Ukrainian bodyguards, and I would assume there were some UK SAS types out there out of camera shot. But the video was a very bold message that Boris trusts Volodymyr. And a very clear message came out that the UK will keep supporting a Zelensky in his war against Putin. Now the bit that really sparked the controversy is Boris and Volodymyr wandering freely around Kiev or Kyiv or whatever, and no sight of war damage despite all the talk of sieges and artillery attacks. Well, that seals it for some. But I would point out that President Putin of Russia wrote an essay in June last year, it's on the Kremlin website, where he talks about Ukraine and Russia being joined at the hip historically, and how important Ukraine is to Russia and its history. And in the essay Putin wrote, The throne of Kiev holds a dominant position in ancient Rus. This has been the custom since the late 9th century. The tale of bygone years captured for posterity the words of Oleg the prophet about Kiev. Let it be the mother of all Russian cities. Now all I'm suggesting here is that although he is quite happy to demolish parts of Ukraine, maybe Putin told his generals that Kiev central was off limits. Maybe that's why Zelensky felt able to stay there, and why visiting the president of Ukraine isn't as dangerous as you would assume. And maybe during his trip, Boris stayed in the safe zone. Just an off-the-wall theory, not a claim of truth. But one thing this might put to bed is the claim that Zelensky was safely ensconced in Poland and using green screen video techniques to claim he was in Kiev or Kyiv or whatever. But I doubt it. They'll just say he got back a couple of days ago. Anyway, make of all of this what you will. But here is the complete press conference held by Johnson and Zelensky. Thank you. Your Excellency Prime Minister Boris, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to welcome you in Kiev. Our most sincere friend, a friend to Ukraine, the leader of our United Kingdom and the ally to our country. I'm very grateful, Boris, for this visit. It's very important at this very difficult and turbulent times for our country. In the same time, you came here and we are especially grateful for, for this to happen. This is a true reflection of the decisive and significant support to Ukraine from the United Kingdom. And we always are grateful for that. We shall always remember that. Just recently, we had a meeting in Kiev and you've recalled this. We draw some conclusions in our joint work in the frames of a strategic dialogue. We were planning future projects. Uh, we were wandering around Kiev. And today, you can see in your own eyes how our country looks like. You know how our villages, how our settlements look like because of Russian aggression. There could be only one conclusion. 
It's our common conclusion. We have to exert even more pressure on the Russian Federation to exert pressure through supporting Ukraine uh, in defending itself. We have to exert pressure in the form of sanctions, and I'm grateful to the United Kingdom that continues and intensifies the sanctions and also provides a significant support of Ukraine by reinforcing our defense capacities. The other democratic Western countries should follow the example of the United Kingdom. It's time to impose a, a, a complete embargo on Russian energy resources. We should, they should increase the amount of weapons being supplied. The people of Ukraine value the support of the United Kingdom on our path to peace, and we were absolutely uh, united with the Prime Minister in terms of the need to reinforce the anti-war coalition. I have informed uh, Boris Johnson on the uh, negotiation process about our clear position. The peaceful negotiations and agreements should provide for a mechanism of effective security guarantees for our country. This is something we've also talked. We count on London to play a key role in this and uh, uh, for reaching peace in Ukraine. That would be our joint uh, future victory. Today we've discussed some major areas that we need to focus on. Uh, we've uh, identified the key objectives. We've coordinated our further work. We have uh, consolidated uh, the maximum support to our country for the reinforcement of the defense capacities of our forces in supporting our citizens both in Ukraine and outside of Ukraine in reconstructing Ukraine. This is also something we've talked upon with the Prime Minister. We shall be reconstructing, rebuilding our cities and regions. Once again, I would like to express words of gratitude for the support, for your leadership, for assistance in the weapons, and uh, for your direct and very clear and specific position of uh, your wonderful and powerful country. And thank you for this visit at this very difficult time for our country. You have did this. Thank you to you and to your team. Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Thank you very much, uh, Volodymyr Jakuya. Thank you very much for, uh, for having me uh, here today at this incredibly difficult time for you and, and for your wonderful country. I want to begin, Volodymyr, by saluting once again the bravery of the people of Ukraine in defying the appalling aggression that we have seen. In the last few weeks, the world has found new heroes, and those heroes are the people of Ukraine. When I was uh, here just a, a few weeks ago, and, and we were an, in another room, I think, in, in, your, in your palace, uh, the defense intelligence that we had suggested that the Russians believed that Ukraine could be engulfed in a matter of days and that Kiev would fall in hours uh, to, their, uh, to their armies. And how wrong they were. And I think that uh, the Ukrainians have shown the courage of a lion, but you, Volodymyr, have given the roar of that lion. And I thank you for what you've been able uh, to do. I think your leadership has been extraordinary. And I think in what Putin has done in places like Bucha and in Irpin, uh, his war crimes have permanently polluted his reputation and the reputation of his, of his government. And it's clear, we, we discuss this at length, it's clear that what he is doing now, he, he has suffered a, a reverse, but his retreat is tactical. And he's going to intensify the pressure now in Donbass and in the East. And so that's why it's so vital, as you rightly say, Volodymyr, that we, your friends, continue to offer whatever support uh, that we can. And together with our partners, we are going to ratchet up the economic pressure and we will continue to intensify a week by week the sanctions on, on Russia. 
not just freezing assets in, in banks and, uh, and sanctioning oligarchs, but moving away from uh, use of Russian hydrocarbons. And we will give you the support that you need, the economic support, but also, of course, the defensive military support, in which I'm proud to say that the UK helped to, to lead the way. And uh, just the other day, uh, we raised, uh, I think, £1.5 billion at a donor conference from friends, partners around the world, dozens and dozens of countries who now want uh, to support Ukraine. We want to liberalise trade with Ukraine as we go forward to help your economic circumstances barley uh, and other commodities. There, there are things we should be doing. Uh, we want to help you with demining your country, getting rid of the savage traps that the Russian armies have left behind. And to come to your, your central point, Volodymyr, I think we are evolving a vision now for the future. Heraclitus, I think, said war is the father of all things. I mean, that was an exaggeration. War isn't the father of everything. But what this war is certainly producing is a clarity about the vision of a future uh, for Ukraine, where together with friends and partners, we, the UK and others, supply the equipment, the technology, the, the know-how, the intelligence, so that Ukraine will never be invaded again. So that Ukraine is so fortified and so protected that Ukraine can never be bullied again, never be blackmailed again, never be threatened in the same way again. In the meantime, there is a huge amount to do to make sure that Ukraine is successful, that Ukraine wins, and that Putin must fail. Over the last few hours I've been able to see quite a lot of your beautiful country and it's an amazing country. I've also seen the tragic effects of the war, an inexcusable war, an absolutely inexcusable and unnecessary war. But having been here in Kiev just for a few hours, I have absolutely no doubt, Volodymyr, listening to you, listening to your team, your redoubtable team, I have no doubt at all that an independent, sovereign Ukraine will rise again, thanks above all to the heroism, the courage of the people of Ukraine. Thank you very much, and Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Thank you.